So, anyone else super curious how we got to the point that Pierre Polyev is making his own documentary and getting well over 4 million views on Twitter alone? Well, I know I am. Since the creation of social media, the Conservative Party has trailed the other parties in communicating. Now, Pierre Polyev has uh, transformed himself into the biggest news outlet in Canada. How did we get here? Is any of this real? I want to know, and I'm sure you do as well. So I'm excited to sit down with one of the top political digital strategists in the country, Cole Hogan, who is going to help me understand what's happening here. Okay, so Fred Delory here with Cole Hogan, who's joining me on background as we try to unpack this. Cole, currently a principal at Earns Cliff Strategy, has worked on countless digital campaigns for conservatives across the country, and we'll touch on lots of those, I'm sure. Cole, this video, over 4 million views on Twitter alone, is this real? Like, what are those views? How does this work? Yeah, so those metrics are different by each platform. Twitter in particular, uh, each impression will count a little bit differently in terms of percentage of the video viewed. So YouTube, it's 25% or more. Uh, Twitter's a little bit less uh, just for it appearing on screen and playing for a moment of time also counts as a view. So I would just cut those in half. But even in doing that, if I go platform for platform and add up, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, wherever else this video is, you know, we're well over 4 million here. And that's like yeah. a heavy saturation point for a piece of political content. It's amazing, right? Like I can't recall anything that big. Um, that's, and it's organic, right? They're not, they haven't put a, a dollar behind or have they, have they put any money behind this other than the production of it? No, which speaks to the success of it. Usually to get these sort of numbers, you have to put money behind something like this. And to your point, like they haven't put a dime behind it. So I'm curious to see, you know, I, I wouldn't chop this down. I wouldn't make a 30 second version. You know, it's this long for a reason. Right. So let it cook the way it is and see if it continues to do this, which will probably then justify more versions of stuff like this. Well, even the first 30 seconds of it, it's like it, the title is Housing Hell and it talks about Trudeau creating this problem. Even if the, the first 30 seconds already that exist in the product seem to uh, hit that point, the, to make the point. Yeah, I, like it would be unorthodox, but I would run this as a YouTube pre-roll ad before any video. And, you know, you have the whole 15 minute uh, version there, but the first 30 seconds, first 10, 15 seconds are there and see if people resonate with it because they already have with an organic version. And a lot of that is this is so unprecedented that people are watching it for the first time for the novelty of the fact that it's a, a 15 minutes uh, video about housing policy. It's rare and not very <laughs> common that a political leader in a party does this. And the thing that I've seen it compared the most to uh, recently is Cretchen's Red Book which is like the most recent version of, oh, you think this guy is a lightweight or doesn't have enough policy or ideas? Well, here's evidence to the contrary. Here's something for you to chew on. That's a fascinating take, the Red Book. I never thought of that, where the, the liberals were able to, to show their plan of what they were going to do if they formed government. Um, it's interesting to me to see how we got to this point uh, where – the conservatives have always trailed liberals in social media since it really since the birth of social media. I remember when Twitter first came out. Uh, I was working in communications for the conservative government at the time. Uh, same with Facebook, um, and it, there's been a real evolution. But we've I felt we've always been behind. We've never took it serious as a big part of it. We never felt. I remember originally in campaign training that we did decades ago was talking about how like stay off social media. It's a waste of time uh, politically and. And if you're not getting good data, you're not getting good voter. Because back then, it was all door-to-door, -door, voter ID, phone calls as well. Uh, ID your vote, get them out. And persuasion was not done through social media because uh, it was it was just being born, I guess, made sense. Uh, but it's just it's changed drastically since then. Um, where do you think, what do you think Polyev did to bring it to the forefront? And how has he dominated it so much? Um, you've worked for several leaders and several campaigns. Like, how does what is Pierre doing different? Well, I'll tell you one of the big differences. You know, um, I designed the digital campaign for Doug Ford in 2018 in Ontario and Jason Kenney in 2019 in Alberta. And those campaigns, um, a lot of the content that we made, we kept short as possible. Uh, you know, we had 10 second versions of. Um, ads with footage from rallies of Doug from when he won the leadership with people chanting his name. And that was it. The ad was just 
10 seconds of people chanting Doug's name, probably like a couple thousand people there. But what it did is d- display momentum. And that's all I wanted to do during the election. I'm not trying to get your email address. I'm not trying to. And that was the shift, the right? Donut. That was the yeah. first time. Because previously, I remember every time we did anything, it was about you have to get data back or it's useless. But now it, it shifted then to, into a persuasion tool, at least for the conservative side. Yeah. And the difference is Pierre can do both, right? Like he can give you long form policy based content and do the daily back and forth political partisan stuff. But now what Pierre is demonstrating is range um, where other political leaders don't really have that range to play in that space. Right. And we'll see. I imagine we'll see some form of imitation and other parties will try to implement this. But, you know, this is not entirely new for uh, Pierre either, because if you remember the leadership race, he had like an eight minute video on inflation. Uh, we had like right. other videos that were talking about Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Uh, we had, you know, a variety of videos talking about n- numerous issues in which he would go into depth. So it isn't new for him, um, but it's a far cry from normal, typical uh, political leadership races, especially in a general election, where I'm just trying to get to a mass saturation point where you've seen my candidates um, and my leader numerous times over. So by the time you get to the ballot box, you've seen content from us in numerous places, you know, at least 30 times, and you're familiar with us and you're familiar with the momentum of the candidate. It, it's interesting you said about the, the leadership race. I recall hearing these stories from the Polyev camp during that race about the, the YouTube videos he would he would do and the the return he would get in terms of new memberships you've worked on leadership races i've worked on i think four national leadership campaigns and several provincial ones it's hard to sell memberships to get people to pay that 10 or 15 dollars to buy a membership the best way to do it traditionally was always door-to-door net personal networks building a ground game, talking to people in different ridings, get them to go out and sell memberships, finding single-issue voters could be dairy farmers or social conservatives, those sorts of things. Within the conservative movement, that was the best way. Um, What Pierre did, I was told, just blew the doors off of that whole system where he'd put out a video and they would get 10,000 new members would just come in. And the party, sorry, the campaign at the beginning didn't know how to handle that. They weren't, they weren't able to do the intake properly. Like it took them a while to catch up on it because the memberships were just flooding in. So it's interesting how he has developed this. Uh, this brand and this ability to do this. Uh, and I think that go- he's been working at this. It's not new, right? He's been working at this for many, many years. Do you know where he's like, where he started at this and where the party was uh, previously? If I'm looking for a uh, precise indication, I think Polyev's YouTube account started in 2011. And he's been putting like content out consistently since then. More house stuff in the beginning, and then more the leadership uh, type stuff as time goes on. But in terms of like why the party in particular made this shift towards a lot of this stuff, and, and the reason why Pierre did it too is, imagine how much easier that conversation at the door is when you're trying to sell a membership if they've already looked you up and seen your content. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey Pierre, I saw I saw you on YouTube. Like that, that that's a common refrain, right? Uh, because you know. As we transition out of, you know, the the end of the liberal government's mandates, people are going to start Googling you more and more. Uh, and peers give them tons of content. And there's numbers to support doing this, right? Uh, 17 million Canadians watch YouTube on their TV. And when they do, um, they watch content that's 21 minutes or longer. On Polyev's YouTube account, the, the most popular videos are the ones that are four minutes long. So they have the data and the information to say, okay, let's let's keep the content machine burning on top of the daily you know, partisan stuff that we do. Let's keep doing the long form stuff because people watch it. The video itself, it was a lot of graphics, a lot of information, uh, Polyev uh, narrating it. I'm, from what I understand from having several conversations with Polyev's team, is this this was driven by him like he wrote this and Jeff Pierce which is the fantastic uh, videographer that's done tons of videos for conservatives over the years uh, is the, the the person who put it all together uh, with him do you think I think we're going to see a lot more of these uh, I think this is like you said earlier this is going to be the new norm where um, they're going to be doing a lot of these because they're able to break down these issues. Uh, and yes, and I'm seeing on Twitter like people are, are are saying it's it's propaganda, it's just it's spin. Um, but of course, every political speech is. Uh, they're all trying to tell a story, right? And Polyev is telling a story. And I'm going to be. I'm, I want to explore this too uh, down the road with liberals and see what they're doing on this because the liberals used to dominate this area. Uh, Trudeau's. I remember in 2015 dominated social media, and and has up until now. 
Um, where do you think, uh, I'm curious to get your thoughts on Shear and where he was on this and then O'Toole on their campaigns versus Polyev. Yeah, uh, to me, my impression has always been that um, opposition is the mother of all invention. And that's sort of that's where we see the innovation in terms of digital campaigning. Right. Um, now we're going to see the Liberal Party scramble and they, they currently are. Like, Well, they're in opposition now. And the, they're so far back yeah. in the polls. I wonder if they'll get that mentality that. Well, the, the day after the housing documentary dropped, I'm always checking the Facebook ad library and they did a, you know, a PowerPoint style um, ads, you know, attacking the uh, the housing policy, and it's just bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, and it's you know it's bringing a knife to a gunfight, right? Like they they don't it's not really even a knife. It's yeah, a... that's a generous description for sure. But they 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 just they're not they're not firing in the same way, so it's going to be tough for them to to compete. And you know how do you really contend with something like that? And you certainly don't do it with replying to a link to the fall economic statement. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I saw your tweet on that. LOL, you wrote, and uh, is this your response or something? <laughs> yeah, whose like whose idea was this? Yes, yes. I'm still uh, curious. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was embarrassing, right? Like when you just uh, link a, a, a bunch of bureaucratic text as your response, and it really shows the state of the Liberal Party, uh, I think, in their ability to respond. And I, I am curious to explore this because again, the Liberal Party is uh, they've done very, very well in this, and I don't think that's a sleeping giant that. Is uh, that is that is down for good? Uh, I think they'll rise again, and that's why our conservatives will need to be ready. I'm curious in the 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 dangers of this, uh, but at the same time, where we have so many uh, candidates now that could just they have their access to the whole country and the world with their with their ability to communicate. I remember when um, back before social media and the the birth of it, we were. Uh, the Conservative Party was very tight on message control of candidates. Uh, you couldn't talk to a local. You couldn't talk to a local reporter without getting national uh, permission from the campaign team. And I stand by that. I think that made perfect sense because you don't know what's going to impact. What may be an issue in your riding may hurt us in ten other ridings. So you had to have that. You have. You're part of a team. You need to work as a team. Social media now. I'm seeing this explosion where people are just putting out their own videos. Case in point, I remember a week before the last election in 2021, our candidate in Carlton put out his own video, had nothing, no no party branding, nothing to do with the party message, uh, and he went on his own message track, and it went national, and it was Pierre Polyev who did it. So I'm wondering, is he, like, he's encouraging other conservatives to do this, and is there great risk in uh, going off brand? Because his message was good. He, he did a great video then, but I would be, I'd, I'd be you know, we're, you run as a team. Each party runs as a team, and there is the risk now of uh, other candidates, I think, going way off message with this. Yeah, there's a risk in particular of going off terms, even in style of branding. If you design something that looks completely different than what the central campaign is doing, you're potentially confusing voters. Uh, in this instance, you'd have to see like what local team on a riding level or an EDA level has the skill set to do that and produce something like that. Out of 338, I'd be hard pressed to think of the ones that would. Uh, the ones that do, uh, it would be minuscule enough that it's not going to get enough attention. Like that is a unique circumstance uh, in 2021 for sure. Um, but at the same time, you could just pick up and do a, a Facebook Live or a, a Twitter Live yeah. and record your own message and, and push your own thing. I'm just, I just, the success of the Conservative Party, the, when we were at our most successful, was when we were disciplined and shared one narrative, one message. And I just wonder, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be curious what the party puts in place. Uh, with the war room, they're going to put in the rules for candidates. Are they going to make them uh, review videos before they put them out? Therefore, there will be no lives. You can't do live. That, that's reviewed by, by party staff. Yeah, I'd be curious to see if they just focus on like, all right, let's just let Pierre stuff do the talking. And, you know, that might be an edict from the central campaign. And that, that would be a good, if they do that, that's a, that makes sense, right? Because his yeah. stuff is resonating and it's very, it's high, it's high caliber stuff. But again, Polyev himself has set the precedent that you can just do your own thing if you want. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with potentially a victory around the corner, I think that edict will land better right. than, than in other circumstances. <laughs> victory certainly unites um, and makes people much more disciplined. Yeah, absolutely. But I wouldn't discourage, you know, I wouldn't discourage local campaigns. If you have something you want to target to your writing and your postal code and you're staying within party brand and message and, you know, the party has had a look or knows that you are a trusted creator in that regard, then, then, then I'd say go for it. Like localize, like 
special tailored content to your writing or a particular issue that's still within the you know conservative platform sphere, then I'd say go for it. What else? What have you seen? I'm curious what you've seen that is comparable to this, like uh, working on other leadership campaigns in terms of certain messages or things that have popped as big as this video. Is there anything that that obviously this is the biggest you can't there's nothing like that compares to it, but the biggest that you've seen pop from your side of things? Yeah, there's well, there's no 15 minute examples. I'll tell you that. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of 30 second ones like the. The For the People theme song, the, the, the song that we had in the 2018 uh, campaign. Right. Your point on that earlier about building momentum, that felt, like I think that was an interesting narrative and in, in maybe the psyche of voters was, I was the director of field operations for the Ford campaign. Then. Mm-hmm. Um, and it felt like a momentum campaign. It was like we were just marching towards victory and there was nothing the liberals could do. They, they had press conferences every day. They tried to throw mud every day and nothing was landing or sticking at all. And uh, and I think maybe part of the narrative was just we were going to win. Uh, you know, they were in power for, what, 13, 15 years? 15 years at this point. Yeah. Um, so change election is tough to run against. Yeah, no kidding. Um, we had that audio prompt, though, which was, well, great in radio in particular. We were running ads on Spotify. We had the ads on Xbox Live. We were a whole bunch of places that right, Xbox political Live. parties I hadn't been. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, ha- we had a lot of momentum in, in that regard, and we had a lot of good visuals of of Doug Ford, like there's, everyone's going up to the guy and hugging him. People are making contact with him nonstop. There's crowds cheering his name. Uh, momentum was truly on our side for that, and it made content so easy to make. Because I don't need to make much of an argument at that point. I just need to to display that momentum. And it was really easy to do with Doug. So on, on that, looking at uh, this video and the reach it's gotten and how, how it's being talked about, even the earned media. Like going back, I remember. Uh, just a couple of years ago, if you want to, if uh, when an opposition leader wants to make news, he has to, has, he or she has to have a press conference and put out a whole policy with a backgrounder and all this information, all thought out and mapped out, and then take tons of questions from the media and answer them, uh, and then maybe they get a headline or two, and might they might get clipped on the evening news if it's a really good policy. And that door has been blown off. Like we don't need to see that crap anymore because it, it was it was so much work and very little impact. Um, and I'm also uh, I'm interested to get your thoughts on this. The actual dollar value in what this video is. If I was running a campaign, and I made a obviously it's it's 15 minutes, but let's say it's 30 seconds or or one minute or two minute ad. What would it cost me to run that on the air on CTV, CBC, Global? and all the other uh, specialty channels in Canada uh, to get a big enough bump. I, I'm thinking, like, this is a multi-million dollar ad that they were able to produce whatever it cost them. I don't know what they what the production cost was, but whatever it was was incredibly valuable given the return. Um, but I think this is worth millions of dollars in terms of ad- free advertising. Millions of dollars. The biggest investment is time. That This undoubtedly took... A few months to put together, maybe maybe about eight weeks, and you I know, don't even actually. I, I'll challenge you on that because I'm not so sure. Okay. Because Polyev knows this issue well. He mm-hmm. could write scripts. He's he's like he is a machine of this. And I've worked with Jeff Pierce a lot over the mm-hmm. years. He could whip this stuff together quickly. I bet you uh, it wasn't months. I bet you this was weeks. And I bet you we could see these guys pounding out a lot of stuff quickly uh, as they as they discover how big of a, a thing this is. Oh, for sure. I think from from concept to actually posting it, I think there was a lot of tweaks along the way, and and Polya was definitely involved personally. And then think of every animation you have to do there. So here's a bar chair here that I have to move and move keyframes for in After Effects, and that's Jeff's work, right? Right. So he'll be doing that over and over and over again, and then his computer will basically be on fire trying to process all these animations and. That's that's what takes time. Yes, and, and I've again having worked with Jeff, he he so he's worked for Harper, Shear, O'Toole, and Poliev, um, doing digital. He, he was he was working speech writing for Harper, um, and he uh, worked in digital for Shear, O'Toole, and now Poliev, and he uh, he can bang out a great product quickly. He's been doing lots of videos of Andrew Shear, Shannon Stubb, Brandon Leslie, uh, Chris Workington, Senator Batters, and it's it's Jeff Pierce that are doing these videos. So he's putting these things together and getting uh, and putting out a great product that's getting tons of views. 
Jeff is an undeniable talent too. This the, the speed at which he works and the call the quality content that he puts out. I, we will definitely see a lot more of these. With the results we've seen in terms of how much earned media this product has resulted in and how many views it's gotten, they have no reason to do it again. And maybe this will be the platform. Maybe the platform will be all video. Right. Well, he, when Paulie have launched his leadership campaign, right? He had that off that uh, that desk in his in his home office mm-hmm. where he launched it, where he he recorded a video announcing he was running because he's able to hit so many people. Again, he is the biggest news network in Canada, um, and it's unfiltered. It's his message, right, right, directly to Canadians. And I, I, I keep seeing this liberal government keep just making announcements. Uh, they're doing stuff. They're getting little clips here and there. And, and it's, I find it, and to your point earlier about how, uh, what was it, opposition is the, the best innovator. Yeah, opposition uh, is the mother of invention. The mother of invention. Uh, opposition is the mother of invention. That's a great line. Um, and you see that across the board. I, I remember that like in the Harper years when we were in opposition, how we got really good at ground game and built this up in our, and we figured out our narrative and storytelling was our big part of our of our success. And then the liberals in 15 were able to, to really uh, punch through with, with social media at the time and their narrative. And now here we are at, at another cycle change. Yeah, the up-close visuals in particular are something that the liberals were really good at. Like you had a photogenic, good-looking guy, uh, that you can put in your ads and put front front and center, do a lot of vertical video. Um, and, you know, there was a, just a change mes- message there too. Like if the public's already behind you, then you're running a lot of online content and ads um, with a total, you know, swing in terms of the public mood and you look like you represent that, then a lot of the digital advertising, the content does the work, the photos, the videos, they do a lot of the work for you. So the liberals right now, uh, they don't have a story. They don't have a narrative. Like it's, it's that's very clear. If they get it, Trudeau's reach though is massive, right? Like he has like significantly more followers on all the social media platforms. And I remember when I ran Aaron O'Toole's campaign, very frustrated that you know Aaron was only leader for a short time before we were thrown right into an election. We couldn't grow anything, and we're up against this behemoth. Polyev is his his. His followers are much smaller in terms of his, uh, you know, the, the people who follow his Twitter, his, his social media, his Facebook, Instagram, whatever. How is it, though, that is it just that he, he's just using it, right? He's just being aggressive and sending a same consistent message. And that's why it's more engagement because Trudeau's engagement is very low. Yeah, I think it's a quality versus quantity thing. And with Polyev, you're getting you're getting both. And right. you're getting a variety. Right, so he's pushed out s- several times a day. He is posting stuff. Yeah, you're getting high quality short form and long form content. So whatever you're looking for, if you know the stuff just comes across your feed on a day to day basis, okay, that's fine. Uh, if you want, you know, the 15 minute, 10 minute video on YouTube while you're scrolling through stuff, uh, you know, usually I'd think that that person's a unique individual. It seems to be more and more so that they're not. Um, Every person that I encountered in the prairies back home in Saskatoon would tell me that they found out about Pierre through YouTube. Right. They were like searching for Canadian political content. He just happened to be there first. Right. So this was a platform, like the Liberal Party of Canada YouTube account was started in 2007, 2008, something like that. And you know there there wasn't like there's an opportunity there for you to start early and keep creating and fostering an audience online, but you have to feed the beast. Pierre's been feeding the beast for like a decade plus. Right. So now there's a built-in audience. And something that was very interesting during the leadership race is on Facebook. As, you, as your organic audience grows and as you run ads, I can target lookalike audiences. Right. So the people that are looking and uh, engaging with your content, I can go over into the Venn diagram of the next group of people who share the same sort of online attributes. And I can do this through the Google ad network too. It's called affinity audiences on that platform. But then I'm reaching the next group over of people. So an online user that shares certain attributes that like and engage with Pierre Polyev videos, you know, the algorithm, uh, Facebook, and on the Google ad network, which is search display and YouTube, can find the next group of people that are most likely to click on that ad, click through to the website, give their email, and then potentially donate down the road. So on that point, on the donate thing, it's interesting where the Conservative Party has always had a financial advantage over the Liberals, where we raise so much more money. But back during the the past leaders, what do you do with that money? It's paid advertising. It's a it's the odd like television is very expensive. It's radio. It's uh, it's mail outs. 
uh, it's uh, it's really that's it, right? It may be a bigger ground game, like hiring more regional organizers. But now, with the conservatives dominating financially, uh, continuing to, they could put that money more effectively into their digital operations, right? They can go out there and target more. That gives them an even increased. Again, the liberals do not raise that the same number of dollars that the conservatives do, which continues to just, I think, create a uh, more momentum for the conservatives. Look at how long, like, Pierre has been sort of building this online audience for, and then in turn, how quickly you're able to build a significant email address. Like, there, it was a long time before even a particular donor ask went out because you don't need to do that right away. All I need is to continue to capture and build an audience. Then I can make that ask down the road. Uh, you know, during the Ontario PC leadership that the Doug won, they only ever asked for a dollar. They right. never asked for more than a dollar, and they never needed to. And people right. were more than willing to give a dollar over and, and it was over a, again. It was a cute thing to do as yeah. well, right? And yeah. it, I ran the leadership campaign against Doug for Christine Elliott, and it was super annoying when they were doing that. <laughs> um, it was, you know, they were like man of the people, and it was tough to combat that. So it was a part of the message too, right? Not just asking for for money and doing it successfully, but yeah, it was. Uh, So Justin Trudeau has a massive audience that's much bigger than Polyev's, not using it effectively. If they get a narrative together and get the right digital strategy, can they start, do you think they can start doing this? I think they can. Uh, I think the problem they have is they've been in government so long, they're thinking like they're in government and they're not fighting the next election like Polyev is, right? They're, and again, that's the burden of governing. They have to govern for the next two years, but I think it's there for Trudeau uh, to me- at least make this race competitive if they would take the time to figure out their story and then start pushing it. Um, not using government assets, they have to use Liberal Party assets to do it and push it. But like, and, and I think that's the difference with Polyev right now. He can wake up every day and just do nothing but this, right? And I think I think I believe all the tweets we see from Polyev, Pierre Polyev has written. These aren't staff writing these. This is Pierre, Paul, and I've known this guy for 20 years, right? He is very meticulous. He, is, he's, he ensures it's accurate when it goes out, and he puts the time into it. Um, and I bet you it's him doing it. And understand, you know, Trudeau can't do that because he's governing. Uh, but I think if he shifts into campaign mode, if Trudeau does, uh, he could compete, and this race could tighten up. Yeah, my question would be then on what issue would he do something similar to the 15-minute housing That's tough, though, when you're government, right? That's the problem. Where when you're in the opposition, you can just hammer, hammer, hammer on any issue, whatever the the faults are. It's hard to say, hey, this is a great story. You should should watch this because things are so good. That's hard because no one buys that. Yeah, and it would have to be like policy. Maybe he needs to hire some Hallmark uh, Channel uh, producers (laughs) and uh, have those folks like paint that rosy picture because people do love the Hallmark Channel. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, Polyev is uh, writing for Scream on uh, on Crave, and uh, and what well, Trudeau maybe he needs his hallmark. Well, there I think there's two plays. You can either like make another image play, which people might be kind of tired of by 2024, 2025. Uh, but I think if you try to make a substantive policy play, I look at the polling and I think on what issue does the Liberal Party do this? They don't really have the same bandwidth and leeway to do what Polyev is here. And I think housing was chosen for a particular reason. More and more we see polling that these issues are the ones on which Canadians trust the Conservatives to govern. Right. Uh, what, what what issue would the Liberals pick to do something similar on? I don't, I don't know if I'd even do issue. I think I would do a narrative, an overarching message why we, uh, if I was a liberal, so we need to continue to do this and where the conservatives will change all of this. I think that's what they need to do. Yeah, I think if, like, you know, they were most trusted to govern on the environment and climate change. But well, even most that's trusted, changed. Uh, that's changed. Yeah, exactly. But they need it. Yeah, that's why they need a whole narrative that they need to push. Yeah, but you're right. They're, they're losing on, even environment is tightening up, which just means to me they're not telling any story at all. Yeah, from what point do they start? Like, I, I think about this for the NDP as well. What foot, and they are even in an even worse position for something like this. But one, the content will be ill received, and two, no one's going to believe you. There's a big credibility issue there. Uh, so if you do an that's image, tough, yeah. right? Right. You can't say, hey, yeah. If you do an image play, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. And if you go policy heavy, you're like, well, this only comes after you know the housing documentary. So now they're playing catch up, and that that has a credibility issue there as well. So. 
There's a column in the Globe and Mail from Gary Mason. I'll, I'll read you the headline. It says, uh, Polyev's housing hell video offers a lousy dime store analysis of our housing crisis. And I saw lots of press gallery journalists retweeting it and uh, and pushing it out. I, I'm of the view, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this. I'm of the view that... It, it, it's his message. It doesn't matter what the, the stats and all this, how it lines up. It's the, he's reaching a wider audience than anyone else right now. He's pushing it. And what are your thoughts on this? Does it matter? Well, uh, as a loyal Western Canadian, I have to sort of lambast uh, the Laurentian outpost from BC for the Globe and Mail, Gary Mason. I don't think uh, Gary's wrote a favorable word about a Westerner or a conservative in years. So Gary Mason aside, uh, I think that the substance of the issue uh, is sort of like there's I've seen bits and pieces in particular from a lot of people online where it's like, OK, he lost me on this, but he had me back on this. There's a lot of people who viewed the video saying like, all right, you know, there is some stuff that uh, I liked and some stuff I didn't like. And I think at the at the end of the day, the fact that he has created, you know, made this 15 minute documentary uh, lends itself credence for the fact that he even that he just did it. Uh, if there's issues with the substance matter, it was like, well, where's your content? Where's your product of right. similar depth? I, I think, I think, as someone who really enjoys writing, I think the the most powerful part of all of this is the two words, the description, the name of the video, "housing hell." Uh, right there, that I think just drives it home, right? So even whatever the how the video looks or whatever, you can nitpick different parts of it. But when you're driving that message, um, I think that hits home. All right. So Cole, I'm a big professional wrestling fan. I know you are too. I feel, and, and I've talked to other people about this, about how it feels like politics is a lot like wrestling. And I think there's a lot linked here. And I like to explore this. So Pierre Polyev's video has millions and millions of views. CM Punk came back to wrestling recently and 71 million views on social media. Is there a correlation between professional wrestling and politics? <laughs> uh, absolutely there is. Uh, the difference between um, the difference between the two, I would say, well, especially politics and the WWE, the, the, the WWE is global and has puts out a massive amount of content on a daily basis. Like, like Pierre Polyev. Yeah, they have, they have a daily show on what, Mondays, Fridays, they have one on Wednesday as well, and they have a monthly show. One and then of which they have is, the N NXT, they have their junior division. Yeah, right? and they had a recent show oh, in, in Saudi so Arabia, so they're, they're like a traveling show that put out nonstop, high quality, like high definition content on all channels. Uh, CM Punk's return, I can't think of a Canadian equivalent that would be, like, you have to think of someone who was previously popular there, came back and whose return is is widely significant. I, I, I don't know what the equivalent would be, but... Uh, well, I, I disagree. I think CM Punk's always been popular. He oh, just yes, hasn't yeah. been there. I think, But I think the Polya video in, in the terms of its reach and how it's popped is similar. He got the same pop when he came out. Like people, when he... when he in, So when CM Punk, before he came out, there was the the rumors he was coming. And I, I watched Survivor Series just to see if he would come. And I was disappointed he didn't come. And then the show ended and then he popped out. Then they came and it felt like the same with the Polyev because I was told early Saturday morning, the Polyev video is going to drop and it's going to be amazing. And I was waiting in hours. And then, as you said, the French video came out and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Where's the English one? And hours later that popped. So it, 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 it feels like a similar script. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's pretty similar. Like, well, I also watched Survivor Series. And, uh, you know, they kept teasing whether or not Randy Orton was coming back at the end of it. He was like, oh, I don't know if Randy's here. And uh, he didn't come uh, yeah. until he did. And then, and then he appeared at the and end. And disappointed us, which is sad for Randy yeah, Orton. like, oh, is Randy Orton not coming back? <laughs> then at the end of the video, uh, or like, sorry, at the end of the Survivor Series, Randy's obviously there. But they teased it, which diverted from... Uh, CM Punk and I think you know you published the French video first journalists were clamoring for the English video They're right like, where, where's so the it's, it was a strategic move so the French video was the Randy Orton <laughs> yes yeah wow <laughs> the French 15 minute housing policy documentary that Pierre Polly have put out was similar which to was Randy still huge Orton's debut and Randy, Survivor Randy Orton's return is still a big deal he's of one course. of the greatest he's the 15 time WWE world champion yeah, I, there's there's a parallel there, and the the content is interesting to to put out. But if, if I was looking to in terms of production levels and breadth of content, you know, a, polit a politician could do a lot worse than following the WWE model. <laughs> so on that front, if the Conservative Party of Canada is currently the WWE, 
is the Liberal Party AEW or Impact Wrestling or the NWA? Where I, are they? I think the Liberal Party is former stage WCW where they For, Oh, beautiful. <laughs> former stage WCW. Perfect. Perfect. Where they were they were competitive and they They were they, great. They, they, they won, won for a while. 80, 83 weeks. They won. They beat WWE 83 straight weeks, yeah, right? Yeah. And then they dipped and they never came back. Yeah, that that might be the case That's here because great if I look at the last, you know, year or two of polling, uh, it's it's been a while since the Liberals had a dominant lead, our uh, dominant lead. So maybe that's uh, the 82, 83 weeks right there for for WCW. I wonder what the audience is for this content, the uh, the wrestling political crossover content. But I'm here for it. It's the exact same, exact same. Hundred percent Venn diagram overlap. All right, Colt. Look, thanks a lot for having this discussion. Love talking politics and a little bit of wrestling mixed in. Uh, you're an expert on both, but uh, you're also out there in the political commentary a lot, seeing you're quoted out there and you're pushing out lots of social media. Where can folks find you if they're interested in seeing more of you? So you can find me on Twitter at Cold W. Hogan, uh, also on Facebook and LinkedIn at Cold W. Hogan. Um, with the housing documentary and many other things, I'm always talking about what's new and innovative in the digital space. So give me a follow there and uh, you'll see all my commentary and more. And, and, I can't, and I can't say enough about how quick you are on the issues and how insightful your commentary is so strongly recommend people to follow you but uh, great having you here thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time on background thanks for having me all right thanks so much for listening in this was a really fun uh, chat with cole we talked politics uh, a little bit of wrestling mixed in there which i i didn't quite expect i didn't think we'd go down that road i wasn't sure how it'd work it in always wanted to so happy that we were able to do that please tune in next week and don't forget to like and subscribe to on background wherever you get your podcasts and send me an email at on background at ipolitics.ca